average golfer, but it's not about me. It's about Team Average again. They are backed by popular demand and more product testing. We're going to very quickly move out this uh, warm office and get over to Four Golf Chester, where we'll be testing five golfers, five different handicaps, all testing the same iron, the Ping G4 10 iron, and giving you their opinion. Uh, I've already done my review on this one a couple of weeks ago. I wasn't overly keen, to be honest. We did good performance, but really didn't like the sound and feel. But that's one person's opinion. And the idea of this type of testing is to get a more varied opinion from different levels of golfers. And that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to shut up. Let's get started. We're going to switch it up. Let's start with Lewis Johnson, the PGA professional. He's using P790 irons and uh, currently, and he's going to give us his opinion of these G410 irons. <laughs> So the look of the club, really like how it sat behind the ball. The top line I thought was great, and um, really liked it. Uh, shelf appeal, I think the black and the red, uh, it's an attractive looking club, there's no doubt about it. It's really like that. And I think at dress, uh, going back to dress, I think they definitely reduce the offset, which I really like being a, you know, a slightly better player. Uh, and I think that's a really appealing for me. So the feel of the club, uh, a lot better than I thought. I think uh, sort of off-centre hits were, as I'd expect from a cavity back club, uh, performed pretty good. And I think on-centre hits, I think sort of for me, it, it didn't really lose too much. Obviously not as good feel as I'm going to get from a more sort of players club, uh, but it's what you expect. But the contrast in, in performance was uh, really good across the board. So overall, the performance of the club, actually really happy I think you know going into the tests like this my P790s are uh, what I like I've been fitted for them something like this it's not something I'd go for and um, it's, it's sort of a, a bigger looking club a more forgiving uh, game improvement iron but in terms of performance I thought it was fantastic and um, peak height a lot higher uh, than my own um, and didn't sacrifice any distance, so got a really consistent launch from it as well, which I've struggled with, you know, with cavity back clubs before whenever I've tried them. And um, so, in, in terms of consistency of performance, I was really happy with it. I uh, thought it was a great performer and a lot better than I thought it was going to be for someone of my ability. So, really good. Right, so an interesting start there from Lewis and uh, quite a positive response that I wasn't quite expecting to be honest with you and again uh, I think he um, summarised it quite well there and uh, great ball striking as well from Lewis. Anyway, that's Lewis done, let's move back into, we've got a new uh, kid on the block, Jay Byrne, um, really gets involved with the channel, always uh, involved in the comments and a great supporter and it's great to have him involved today, he's a 13 handicapper, he's a big lad and he hits the ball an absolute mile, which you're gonna find out very shortly. He's using currently AP2 iron, so when you see the numbers, slightly weaker lofted iron that he picks it up against, but here's his opinion on the G410 irons. <laughs> shelf appeal perspective really nice looking club um, you can tell there's a bit of weight behind it uh, for that bit of help but when you lie the club down behind the ball you don't really notice that um, the club sits really well there's actually a slight chamfer to the back of the top leading edge which um, makes it appear slightly thinner which is quite a nice feature um, as you look down at the ball as well uh, the center of the club has got like a matte finish which offsets it against the satin which actually gives the appearance of a slightly smaller head which is really nice to the eye I like that okay so the way the ball feels when you hit it out the middle it feels really nice uh, really solid um, sound and get really good feedback through it slightly off center hits um, you do get a little bit of noise a bit more feedback that you've actually hit it like off center but to be honest I play forged irons and 
Mine give a very similar sort of feel when I hit them, so I'm really happy with the way it feels when I hit the ball. Yeah, I think for such a premium looking club and good performing club, it's really good value. It's actually probably the lower end of what um, the major manufacturers are coming out at, now, so I'd be quite happy with that price. Uh, so how the club performed, really happy with it. Um, good, decent ball flight, I uh, was getting good distances out of it. Um, even when I hit ones that were slightly low on the face and got low spin out of, they still got a relatively good distance, uh, very similar numbers. Um, and in comparison to mine, they flew slightly further and a little bit higher, um, but there is a slight difference in the loft with mine. Um, but nothing massively different in comparison, so I think it's a really, really good performing club. It's been quite a positive start to be fair and uh, let's see if that continues now as we move over to Andy Roper, been on the channel a few times, 9 handicap golfer, again using P790 irons from Taylor Made. Uh, let's see what Andy thinks of these but also make sure you hang on at the end of the video because there's a few bloopers from Andy's um, summary of this club test and do not miss that bit either but here's Andy's thoughts on the P Ping G410 irons. <laughs> I'm not a fan of them at all. Uh, I've never really liked pinged irons um, anyway, but they're too chunky. Um, too chunky from all angles, really. The, the bottom of them is much, much too wide for what I'd like from a sole. Uh, I, I don't know whether it's a case of sort of like golf snobbery or once you reach a point with your golf ability, whether you move up uh, as to what you expect out of a golf club. But, from what I'm currently playing at the moment, which is the 790s, the, the tailor-made to that, it's like night and day. Um, it's hard to be positive about it, and to be honest with you. Uh, not a fan of the top line, the offset, uh, the sole plate on it, not even the finish, just just not a fan of it at all. The feel with it, it that's the main thing that, that, uh, that sort of stands out to me, that there's literally no feedback from the club at all. It, it's like hitting a nail into a, a piece of wood. Uh, it doesn't sound um, great, the, even when you hit one right out of the screws, there's no sort of feedback from it, there's no sort of that buttery, sort of crisp feel that you get off a, off a different iron, certainly off these tailor-made. I've got, when you hit a good one, the feedback's there through the noise, through the, you feel it right through the club coming back into you, um, that you've hit one right out the middle. Whereas with this, I honestly couldn't tell you sometimes whether it's hit out the toe, the heel, low, high, it, it was just totally uh, devoid of any sort of feedback, which surprises me because with this type of club, I would expect to, to get a feeling like the ball's really firing off the face. Um, and with that, the noise, almost like it's trying to help the ball into the air, uh, a really loud sound, whereas this is quite dull, um, solid and, and, and boring, really. Uh, I suppose at 105, it's kind of a competitive market that it's, in, it's probably priced right for where they're trying to the market they're aiming at. Um, personally, I think there's probably better clubs out there for that price bracket. Um, and certainly if you're a somebody who feels reasonably competent in getting the ball in the air, doesn't need a great deal of assistance with that, then I'd probably stretch and go for something around the 130, 140 a club mark rather than going go 105 with these. For me, the, the positives with it really are, uh, considering the type of club that it is, the spin number was pretty decent for it, so I'd be quite happy going in at a green from sort of 150, 160 in, confident that it'd probably hold. Whereas with this type of club, I would imagine ordinarily it'd come in quite low and hard, not a great spin rate, and probably bounce on through. So that's the positive with it. In terms of comparison to my own club, I uh, didn't really see a massive amount of gains distance wise. Um, I think consistency was probably decent across the board with both of them in terms of line. Uh, I'm not a particularly long hitter of the golf ball by any stretch of the imagination. So for me, I get my advantages in uh, consistency. So uh, for me to score well, I just keep myself in play, plod around the course. I don't ne necessarily need distance, to be fair. So with the, the club that I've currently got, which is the 790, I know if I'm on the, a certain distance and I hit that reasonably well, I'm going to get it on the button and on the green and I'll be in play. Whereas with this, I wouldn't necessarily be as confident that I'd necessarily do it every single time just because of the disparity of sort of feel across the face I'm getting from it and it's jumping from uh, you know the, the best strike being 
let's say for example 150 to the worst strike being 140 I know that obviously falls down to me but as a game improvement club I'd expect that to be a lot tighter whereas it is with this with the 790 um, because although I play off nine I'm quite capable of playing golf to a level of 28 you know some days it just doesn't work and um, I'd want a little bit more from that club to help me on those off days which I feel I get on the tailor made and I don't with this okay Opinion slightly different there from Andy and uh, a little less positive, I suppose you'd say. It's uh, next up, we move to Brian Treadwell. Brian, again, 11 handicap golfer, using a Ford Mizuno MP18 iron. We're going to pitch up, you'll notice in the numbers, he's using six iron as opposed to seven iron because it's direct comparison in terms of loft. Uh, so, be interested in this one. A current user of a forged iron used a cask club from Ping. What's Brian going to think? <laughs> I think it looks very bulky um, at address um, behind the ball. Um, I think as a, as a club, it's a decent looking club, um, but it has a very large presence at address. I didn't think there was much feedback, if any, from the Ping uh, G410. Um, I was hitting shots, and you'd have, a, you'd have an idea as to whether they were good, and, but there wasn't very much feedback. In comparison to the um, Mizuno um, MP18SC, which I play with, I feel there is much more feedback and a much better feel um, with the club. It also seems much of a better balance than the, than the Ping. The Ping felt quite heavy um, throughout the swing. I don't know how that compares to the other irons in the market. If it's around the same price as the others, then I think fair play um, to Ping. If they're drifting upwards with it, then I would really wonder about the, the value that you're getting out of this as opposed to other clubs that are within that range. It's the six iron in the, in the Mizuno club has a 30 degree loft which equates to the four, uh, the Ping G, G410. Um, so that, that's what I hit. Um, I have to say I much prefer the Mizuno in every single respect. Um, better feel, um, I felt it was a better strike through the ball um, in the sense that I'm able to shape it. There was more, much more of a feel uh, about, about that to it. So yeah, significant preference for me I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. Probably as I'd expect there from Brian, quite a bit difference in terms of feel from a Forge club into the, so a big, big change there and uh, yeah, bore out in his comments, I think. Right, last but not least, Steve Ohms. Steve is a 17 handicapper. He's currently using what you'd call a game improvement iron. He's using the Callaway XR irons, 30 degree seven iron, 30 degree seven iron, the Ping G410. It's a straight up head to head in terms of his numbers to compare, but let's see what his opinion was of these irons from Ping. Address, look, looking down at the club, um, the, the new ping irons, they're a lot thinner than we could in club, the XRs, Callaway XRs. Uh, less offset, and the Callaway XR, it looks as if it's got a little bit more meat behind the, uh, the club, which gives me more confidence when I'm looking down uh, before the strike. No, the, the new ping iron, it wasn't much different in, in the feel of the club when, when I'm striking it I, and even a bad shot I was getting a, a straight or well, fairly straight and the dispersion was good but when you look at the numbers um, I, I can't see much difference in the strike other than the XR I maybe due to it being a bit more meaty felt a, a, a better shot okay um, I don't think it's overly priced for, for a club um, so if the numbers fitted for me then I, I would buy it Okay. Yeah, well, it's a considerable dis difference, um, and I wouldn't change. I wouldn't change a Callaway XR for the for this ping iron. Um, and again, look at the numbers which will be posted, and, and that'll give you the reasons for. I'm getting a better strike. Um, I just wouldn't change. So that's it. Lots of opinions, lots of variables as well, and as you'd expect, I think. Um, 
for me to do a summary and you can draw your own conclusions from uh, what you've just seen, but for me there's interesting uh, elements throughout the day that I was watching and observing. One interesting thing for me was that strike is still king and basically the the people that hit the ball out the middle more consistently, and if you take Lewis as being that prime example who struck the ball really, really well, actually probably approved the feel of the club, but he tended to find a centre of it. And what I'd expect from a game improvement iron is a little bit more of similar feel for off-centre hits. And I think for the likes of myself and other players that tested this that perhaps weren't fine in the middle, their opinions on the kind of feel and sound were quite negative. Um, I think that definitely with the size and bulk of the club head, we've seen higher launch angles. So the lower place CG uh, certainly helps in terms of launch. So anybody who's struggling with that, then this kind of club without doubt helps you get that ball launching and get a bit better ball flight if that's something that you particularly struggle with. Um, I think one again major positive was the spin number. Everybody produced relatively decent spin numbers and again from this kind of iron it's something that can really drop off and fall off the charts but again most people achieved something that was comparable with what they were already using in terms of spin. That was a real positive again. Overall distances I think we just seen what you'd expect to see from a 30 degree iron. There was nothing that was flying out there in terms of distance and again comparing like for like loft for loft between the clubs they were currently using nothing really that was seen there i think the one major positive for me throughout everybody that played the irons and tried the irons was dispersion uh, in terms of left to right dispersion uh, it was noticeably um it was straight it, it was it certainly seemed to help or across a cross section of players five players there all seemed to keep the ball fairly straight and in a good little compact area that we'd be happy with, I think. And I found that again out there on the course, that dispersion and performance was overall good. Like I said, my issue was all about sound and feel, but that varies from person to person, golfer to golfer. So I think a real good test. I certainly enjoyed it. I enjoyed observing it. I enjoyed the differences in the opinions. And I hope you did too. Plenty more of this to come. Uh, we will try and evolve this. We're going to introduce a scoring system. So we'll have maybe a bit of a lead table at the end of 2019 in terms of irons and drivers and whatever else. That's something that we'll look to continue to improve, evolve, make better. And your feedback is always welcome. So for now, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one. And uh, we'll be back very soon with more testing from Team Average. <laughs> I'm serious now. So start off. <laughs> Come on, mate. Right, so describe honestly what you think of the looks of this golf club. Uh, I'm not a fan of it at all. Um... <laughs> <You're right. laughs> so, the look of the club. Uh... Don't you can't.